In this video, I'm giving you your step-by-step -step game plan to make your first $10,000 a month of blogging in the 2020s and some shortcuts you can take in this new world of AI. So we're covering keyword research, affiliate marketing, writing the content, using AI tools. I don't wanna waste your time. So let's get right into it. Before we get started, click the link in the description below, sign up for our free course, hours of free content, best blogging community in the world, sign up for that. And let's get into the topic for today. So we're gonna cover a lot in this video about what blogging is today, what it was three or four years ago, how to speed up your content creation process, all of that stuff and how to start thinking about making money blogging in the 2020s. But first we have to cover creating blog content faster with AI. So, you know, when I first started my blog, I wrote everything myself and then I hired an SEO writer. But now we have these AI writing tools that can basically write stuff for us, right? You just click a button and articles get created, which means that you can cover topical authority a lot faster. You can write a lot of related content, a ton more output when it comes to blogging and creating content than ever before. So the future is really one click. What do I mean by that? Well, AI tools have been around for a little while. They required some manual work at first, but now it's getting down to a one click formula. So let's look at some AI tools and what they can actually do today currently. So one is content at scale. And you know, all that you do now to create a blog post is basically click a button, add content, choose it from a given keyword, enter your target keyword here, choose the word count, you know, two to 3,000 words, and then hit create content now. And what that does is it basically creates a finished article for you that looks something like this. So here's one on how to make money with AI. You can see that the whole thing was already written, took about five minutes, and there's an intro, table of contents, all of the headings, everything's pretty much done for you, and it's ready to go. That did not exist four or five years ago in the world of blogging, that didn't even exist last year. So we're entering this world now where you click a button and you can have an article done within about five minutes. Now, of course, we have to edit this with a human being, we can't just publish something 100% AI based right away, but it opens the door for creating a lot of content quicker and making a lot more money, which brings us to our next point, writing affiliate articles with AI. So to make money blogging, we typically, you know, a purchase typically has to be made somewhere. Yes, there's ad revenue where we can rank for high volume posts, get a bunch of traffic, just put some banner ads on our blog. But really to make the most money blogging, we wanna make money with affiliate marketing because we can 10X, 100X, even 1000X our revenue based on the keywords that we're ranking for. Now to write affiliate articles, there's a clear templated format for these articles. And again, when it comes to this AI stuff, it's like 90% really good SEO, 10% AI tools and figuring that stuff out. So when you're writing articles, affiliate articles specifically, there's a really clear format to do this. You know, you want to have an introduction, then you have your companies laid out in a certain way with the right headings. You add your affiliate links in the, into these posts in a very specific way. Uh, you start with MVP formula. So maybe instead of writing the 25 best SEO tools, you start with the five best SEO tools because again, blog posts are infinitely updatable assets. So blogs are really mediators between Google searches and purchase decisions. So you wanna rank for stuff. Let's look at a couple examples. So I Googled here best modular sectional, which is a piece of living room furniture. And we see one of our blog growth engine students here, Beth R. Martin ranking with her article on the 12 best modular sectional sofas of 2023 ranked and reviewed. But you can see all affiliate articles follow a very clear format. There's the H1 title, there's an introduction, there's a little bit of information. So this would be like an H2 heading on what is A plus the target keyword. Then we get into the list. And this is a really nice format where it's laid out with link links going down the page. This is an H2, what are the best plus your target keyword. And then it's just a simple templated format reviewing products. That's how affiliate marketing money is made, right? There's search intent behind it. Somebody Googles a product that they actually want. They get to this article, they read a little bit, and then they click these affiliate links. And anytime that they purchase through these affiliate links, this website gets paid. And you can see $2,500 for each sofa, uh, even in, uh, estimating maybe a 10% commission, you're making $250 every time somebody buys through one of these affiliate links. And the great thing about affiliate marketing is once you're ranking for content, it's pretty easy to maintain those rankings. It's passive income because people just keep clicking on that article and Googling you and finding it month over month over month. And you can make a bunch of money from the number two, three, four, five, six positions in your article as well. But you can see it's a very clear templated format with information, with product features, and with affiliate links. Another example is from another one of our Blog Growth Engine students, and that's Rob. He has an article on the best pickleball paddles of 2023. So you see a really cool, <laughs> funny featured image here. There's an introduction, a table of contents, uh, what to consider when purchasing. So this is a nice call out section that he has here. You can also see that there's ads on this article. So you can do affiliate marketing plus ads when it comes to uh, affiliate content. You can make money both ways. But then he has a nice call out box here with the best paddle. You can click here to view the price on Amazon. You can see that this paddle is $219, one of the really nice ones. And they make a commission on every sale there. You see though, each one has the same kind of formatting. It's a you know a content block 
plus some information, plus what customers are saying, which is really helpful, especially in this world of AI. That's something that you can do is use ChatGPT and these tools to pull in customer data and find what people are saying, because really what's really important in affiliate articles is differentiating between products. So real human experience, making sure that people understand which products are best for which people, what's good and what's bad about it, not just what's good. But making these call out boxes is really easy with um, a tool called Cadence, Cadence WP. They have theme and Cadence blocks. So it's really simple just to create these kind of content blocks. But you see that you know, it's pretty clear on page SEO. When we talk about Surfer SEO as well, we can use that tool to understand how long the article should be, the word count, the number of headings that is required, um, all the different semantic keywords that should be added and included in this article. This is where AI comes in because the human mind, like we can't come up with all these different variations of what Google expects to see in an article about how to make money with AI. They would want to see keywords like income, side hustles, many businesses, AI generated content, artificial intelligence tools. The human mind, we can't come up with what Google's machine learning expects to see when they're ranking content. So we can use a tool like this, Surfer SEO, with Surfer AI to you know, really optimize this article for SEO. And then, of course, we give our own take, our unique experience, and optimize it, write a really good intro, add some humor, and write it for human beings. So when we think about creating these types of articles, we have to kind of cover what used to work and what works now. So this is a very brief history. This is what worked in 2019. This is when I first started my blog in 2019. So this was when you'd slowly write every single article yourself. So I was writing about one to two articles a week myself, typing every word and literally with my fingers, burning my fingers up and writing everything myself. I also wrote like an even split of transactional and informational content. And in this world of AI, we now need more informational content per transactional posts. And we'll cover exactly what that means in the future uh, part of this video. We also link heavily to the money pages. So you could just do a bunch of link building, push a bunch of links to individual transactional affiliate articles, and they would just rank if you had the highest URL rating, the best links and all of that. That's not really the case anymore. Content quality matters more. Uh, links do matter, of course, if you're going to start blogging, but really content quality matters a little bit more. Uh, lots of guest posts for backlinks. So that worked a lot in 2019, but we don't want to just have just guest posts nowadays. We have to do more strategic link building uh, and then just covering lots of different topics, which is a little bit broad and doesn't work as well now when we have to have topical authority. So what works now with SEO and AI? Well, topical authority wins out. That's staying in one sub niche before moving to another. So what I mean by that is if you want to rank for a very specific topic to make money, like the best in-home saunas or something like that, you couldn't just create that one article about saunas and expect to rank. Google would expect you to have maybe five, 10, 20, 30 articles related informational articles about saunas, how to clean them, how to assemble them, best for this, best for that. So you'd have to have a lot of different content, which is topical authority. The more you write about a piece of information, the more Google thinks you're an expert on it. So you're writing more informational content. There's also high quality strategic link building. So that's things like creating passive link generators. With ChatGPT, you can create things like calculators, generators, and just paste it into your site. So you could have things like uh, boat loan calculator, rank for that, put a calculator in the blog post. So content quality content design is more important now as well. And then of course, accelerating your publishing with AI. Well, you don't have to use AI tools. They really are a one tool in your arsenal that can speed up your content velocity, get more blog posts published, and really uh, help you build topical authority faster. Now, when it comes to using AI tools or just writing things yourself, that's, you know, how do you do keyword research, assemble the content, publish it, update it. You have to really become familiar with the process first before you start hiring anyone or bringing in outside help to do that. But this is kind of what it looked like in the past and what it could look like in the future with the power of AI. So traditionally, you could get an SEO writer to write everything for you. Now, I would pay about 10 cents a word in the past for articles. So that was like a 2,500 word blog post for 250 bucks. An hour of editing is about six hours of work for $300. Now there's a new world of an AIO writer where it's an artificial intelligence optimization writer that you've been spent about five minutes creating this article, 25 bucks per typically per credit or per blog post, depending on the tool that you're using and one hour editing, you're probably looking at about an hour to an hour and five minutes for $75. So it's one sixth the time spent and a quarter of the cost in this new world of AI if you're looking to scale and expand your content efforts. But really, I want to stress this, that 
AI is just one facet of this. Yes, it's new and cool and interesting and everyone's talking about it, but really you need to have the traditional SEO experience plus this AI stuff and that equals your success. So the people that have these new AI tools, they might not know this you know, world of SEO that we know so well, how to structure, how to format these articles, how to write for human beings, how to format the URLs, the titles, the headings, the meta descriptions, all of that. If you can couple your SEO knowledge, the things that haven't changed much in the last five years with these new AI uh, things, you're gonna stay on the cutting edge and you'll be a lot more successful, be able to scale your blog to making money a lot faster. All right, so we understand that we have to create content blog articles to rank content to make money, right? That's what a blog is. But what keywords do we actually target? Like how do we actually choose the right keywords to go after to write content on the uh, people are Google searching to actually make us money? Well, we have to talk about informational versus transactional intent. So what that means is on the informational side, people are looking to learn something. That's a lot of what content on the internet is. And that can be done by searches for like how to do something, how to start a business, how to start a blog, how to fix your car, what is, so definition type uh, searches, ideas, living room ideas, patio furniture ideas, um, camping ideas, all kinds of ideas posts that people are searching for, and that's more informational content. Not gonna drive affiliate revenue, but will get you a lot of traffic, can make ad revenue and build your email list. Then we have transactional content. So this is when people are actually making buying decisions. This is where search intent comes in, which is why affiliate marketing is so much more powerful on Google than it is on like Instagram, where people are just passively scrolling. On Google, they're actively searching for things that they're interested in. This is inbound marketing. Now, for transactional posts, the keyword modifier is best best signifies comparative content. So for example, that could be best fishing poles, best fishing kayaks, best uh, camping gear, best laptops, best credit cards. They're looking for a blog to give them the answers to these transactional questions. And these are really the only two types of articles you ever need to write, it's really that simple. So let's look at an example here of informational and transactional intent with search volume on the left-hand side and competition on the bottom. So what we have here at the very bottom is low search volume, low competition posts. These are what I call early wins because they're not that valuable. You can rank for them. They're pretty much long tail informational pieces of content and keywords with low difficulty scores and things that new bloggers could start ranking for pretty quickly. So that would be in the biking niche, something like stationary bike workout for beginners. It's an exercise. People aren't gonna buy a bike with that search and it's pretty long tail. Next we have higher volume posts. So these are things that are lower competition but people search for them a lot every single month so they can bring a lot of traffic. These are what I call brand builders. So something like how much is an electric bike? Searched a good amount every month. You can get a lot of traffic for it. You're answering a question but it's not really getting you affiliate revenue. It's just getting you traffic. Then we have high competition transactional posts what I call antiques. These are ones that have been around for a really long time, high volume, high competition, they're tough to rank for, you might not wanna write these. So every niche has these. These could be things like best VPNs, best credit cards, best travel credit cards, best web hosting. Someone probably wrote this article like 15 years ago. It's probably not the best idea for you to write it now. You'd probably Google this term and find like all high authority sites, media sites ranking in the top 10, like Forbes, CNET, Tech Radar. Be really hard for a new blog to compete. But next we have the best option and that is lower competition transactional posts. So these are medium search volume, maybe medium to low competition. Even though it's on the right hand side, it's probably in the middle of this graph. These are about emerging products. So something like best electric dirt bike, not very competitive, pretty new still. You know, e-bikes are emerging. They've, they've been around for a little while, but they're not as old as stationary bikes are. And the competition isn't quite as hard, but you can make a lot of affiliate revenue here. The search volume is probably going up for this term over the next couple years. So these are the two, ad revenue from high volume informational posts and affiliate revenue from lower competition, new and emerging products in your niche that you can write about. So let's take a step back and talk about Keyword Research 101. So really first you have to go where the fish are and this is search volume. So you can't just create a blog about anything and expect to get traffic and make money or just random posts about your life. There has to be search volume. People have to actively be Googling, searching for these things to actually get traffic. So this is a Google driven engine these days. You have to uh, also have to go after the right opportunities. So that is based on keyword difficulty. That's how competitive it is to rank for this keyword. So the keyword difficulty is 90 and it's been, a, the, you know, the keyword's been around forever and all these media sites are ranking. It's gonna be really hard for you. So you have to understand what is possible to rank for. You also have to master keyword timing. And this is a crucial and hidden component that isn't in any of these SEO tools, the timing of the keyword. So how early are you compared to everyone else? So if you write an article today about the best refrigerators of 2023, these articles have been around since the dawn of the internet probably, since affiliate marketing was created, probably in the early 2000s, 20 years have passed. 
think like Shark Tank when it comes to this. Like what's new and emerging and things that you can write about, products that you can review on your blog and you can compare new types of products versus old ones. So timing is a hidden component. And this kind of goes back to understanding your niche and really getting ahead of things before other people do. So let's look at some examples using keyword research tools to find good keyword opportunities that can actually make us some money. So I'm here in the Ahrefs Keyword Explorer. I'm gonna put the word best in. Now best by itself, you're gonna get best by, best by credit card, super broad search. If you go to matching terms, it includes everything that also includes the word bests. So this is too broad because it's like best CD rates, best movies of all time, best porn. I've never searched that one myself, but we can put a niche in here. So like, let's do best fishing and we see what it comes up with. Now this is gonna be all different kinds of fishing articles. So like best fishing kayak, rods, lines, sunglasses, all these different good articles that you could write. You can see that the KD, the keyword difficulty is pretty low. This is a number from zero to 100. Lower numbers are better. Green is good, red is bad. Then there's volume. So that's how many times it's searched per month, right? And these are really the only two you have to really focus on. These other ones aren't, this is global search volume, traffic potential. So you can, this is how much tra traffic you could actually get per month if you're ranking for it, because there's lots of different variations of these keywords that Google kind of consolidates into one thing. Cost per click, clicks per search, we don't have to worry about that, but we can look at this and we see these could be a lot of good individual articles for fishing. So you could see, you know, best bass fishing rods. If I were to analyze this one, the difficulty is only seven, it's not that hard. The volume is 1.6. Uh, traffic potential, you get 2,600 visits a month. We can see the top five uh, ranking results, top 10 here. There's a lot of volatility going on, uh, things moving up and down. And we can see that there's a DR0 site no authority, no links pointing to it, a brand new site ranking on page one of Google, juronadventures.com, seven best bass fishing rods of 2023. So that's a good sign. If you see low competition sites ranking on page one, that's a good sign that you can rank too. Let's try best tennis in the matching terms tool. And we can see that there's all kinds of different stuff, shoes, rackets, rackets for beginners. That looks like a pretty good one. Test tennis rackets for beginners. Search volumes going up uh, and you can see it Peaks in the summer months, goes down in the winter months, which makes a lot of sense. You can get a good amount of traffic from it. And you can see, again, there's some low authority sites on page one. This one here, the tennisbros.com with a DR domain rating of 31, 29 from tennisracketball.com. So another good sign that you could rank for this. The number one site is actually the tennistribe.com who only has a DR of 27. So not a ton of authority on these sites, not a ton of backlinks pointing to them, but probably really good content. So if we look at this article, and we see the seven best tennis rackets, we can see, again, it's a similar format, introduction, links going to the page, and also links right to the products. And then we have the quick navigation and all of the individual articles. So nothing like amazing here, nothing insanely uh, over the top or hard to do, but it's a good article and it's ranking number one for this keyword of best tennis rackets for beginners, making some probably some good affiliate commissions. Let's look at another one. Let's just do rugs. So let's say you love rugs. You love Turkish rugs, all kinds of rugs. You're just obsessed with putting rugs all over your home. You have hardwood floors and you love it. But look at how many different types of rugs there actually are. If you were running like a furniture, indoor lifestyle, home type blog, outdoor living room area, there's like hundreds of articles that you could write here. Entryway rugs, rugs for dining rooms, rugs for dogs, outdoor, washable. Washable is a new one. There's some new companies that, um, create them. So you can see this is actually a little bit more competitive, New York Magazine, New York Post and all of that. But if we go down to like best rugs for dogs. So we see again, actually this one is pretty competitive. So sometimes keyword difficulty doesn't give you the full picture. You have to dive a little bit deeper in keyword research and look at the top 10 results and be like, can I outrank Martha Stewart, apartment therapy, the Spruce Pets, House Beautiful, all of these kind of more authority sites. So you have to kind of understand keyword research when it comes to that. Like look at the difficulty, look at the volume, but then also get a feel for who's ranking in the top 10 to really understand if you can rank for it or not. You wanna just look at your niche overall and find like, try to find a good 20, 30 affiliate articles that you could write in your niche and do an analysis on it and then add them to a list. Let's do another one for transactional articles like best bike in our earlier example. We can look at some here. Now we see, it looks pretty competitive, 69, 57, but what we can do here is we can drop the keyword difficulty down so that it only shows things with the keyword difficulty under 30. And then we can see, okay, this is actually not too bad. Best balance bike, mountain bike brands, best bike for beginners, best beginner bike, sports bike for beginners. 
this is the one I found earlier, best electric dirt bike. This uh, search volume is going up ever since 2020, 2021 ish. There's a lot of traffic you can get for this. And then if we look down the list, there's this site, funtransport.com with a low uh, domain rating ranking. There's also motocross advice with 28 ranking and another top 10 result, motorcycleshippers.com. So a lot of low authority sites ranking on the first page of Google, which is another good sign for this keyword. Let's try another one like software. And software is a little bit more of a difficult one, right? Because we have lots of 80s, 70s, 50s, and it's a little bit more competitive. So it's really good when you're first starting out finding these transactional keywords, which is like half the equation of your blog, maybe 25% of your articles, 20% of your articles, whatever it is. But you need to understand like, what is my niches? What is your pain tolerance? What are you willing, how many, you know, how many pieces of content are you willing to create? You know, if I wanted to rank for best antivirus software, I wouldn't be able to unless I created probably a thousand articles about antivirus stuff and got thousands of backlinks to do it. So I just wouldn't want to go down that road. It's a lot easier if you, you know, take the path of least resistance here. Don't go after things that are super difficult. Now you can go after some home runs and try, but you want to have, you know, understand your niche, understand, I want to get to like 20 or 30 really good affiliate articles that I can rank for that have decent search volume. So finding those is going to be the challenge, but it's really worth it. And that kind of covers the transactional half of the equation. Now let's talk about informational keywords. So these will make up a bulk of your searches, but you can search for something like how to put that into Ahrefs, go to the matching terms, and you can see all kinds of different informational how to searches, how to screenshot on a Mac, how do I register to vote, how to lose weight fast, things that are searched a ton. You can see the volume for these is a lot higher, 500,000 a month, 250,000 a month. But let's try something interesting here. So let's say we're a tech blog and we want to talk and write articles, informational pieces of content about like the iPhone. Well, I would just put in how to iPhone and then it'll pull up tons of different article ideas with tons of search volume here, how to reset it, unlock it, back it up, turn it off, re you know, hard reset, hide photos, lots of different things. And you can do the keyword difficulty down to like, let's say 25, show the results there. And this gives us a lot of technology-based articles that we could write about iPhones, how to unlock it, connect AirPods to iPhone, lots of lower difficulty, high search volume, informational posts that you could write related to that. Or what if you did iPad? It's the same thing. You want to start with one area and go down the list, but we see this isn't as competitive either. If I do the max difficulty of even like 10, let's just drop it way down to see what's easy to rank for. We can see that there's going to still be a good amount here. So how to get rid of split screen on iPad. Difficulty is very low, still some good search volume here. So tons and tons and tons of articles about how to specifically do things in technology. Now let's look at some other niches. I can put ideas into the matching terms tool and it comes up with all kinds of stuff. Dinner ideas, drawing, tattoo. I know I've searched that before, looking for different tattoo ideas. Charcuterie board ideas. You add some cheese, some meat, some olives, whatever else, some nuts but you need some ideas there, but you'll see a lot of ideas posters, people like generally looking for thoughts on a topic. They're not gonna buy something, but they have a ton of search volume. People online like to look for ideas. They need ideas, people just need ideas. So you can see the search volume is high, but we can look for something like patio ideas, and we can see backyard patio ideas, small patio ideas. So if you're like running an outdoor, even like a barbecue website where you're reviewing grills, and patio furniture and stuff like that, backyard stuff. You could write a bunch of articles on patio design ideas or things like that. And then again, we can just drop it down with a max of 20 difficulty and see what it comes up with. We still have some good ones like backyard patio ideas on a budget, simple paver patio ideas, patio brick ideas, patio privacy ideas, floor enclosed. It's just, it's what's really interesting is like people don't understand the uh, the opportunity, how big it is, because there's just an infinite number of keywords and things that you can write about that you can just build topical authority quickly. And if you had like AI tools and you wrote, you know, 10 of these articles relatively quickly, you're building topical authority in that niche. So that's the power is like, the power isn't just using an AI tool, it's understanding keyword research, plus how to format it for SEO, plus how to do it quickly. Next, we have to talk about understanding the informational intent of your niche, because everyone's a little different. Not every niche has a bunch of ideas posts like backyard furniture and living room ideas and stuff like that, party ideas, or how to do things. Sometimes it's other things. Like if you're in the fitness niche, for example, the seed phrase, the seed keyword that you would use would be like workouts and exercises. So people in fitness are looking for those two things when they're not, you're not going like to necessarily buy something for affiliate revenue, but that's where the bulk of searches are. So you put in something like exercises and you can see the matching terms. Number one, Kegel exercises. I've never 
really tried that myself, but it actually probably works pretty good, I imagine. Uh, hamstring, shoulder, lower back. You see that some of these are pretty competitive, but again, what are we gonna do? We're gonna drop the difficulty down to 25. Let's try hit show results and we'll see what's a little bit easier to rank for. Things that are a little bit more random, like inner thigh exercises. You really gotta get that inner thigh strong, game strong, so that's cool. Double chin exercises. I might need that in a couple of years. We'll see about that. Hip mobility exercises. I'm getting pretty old. I'm 35. Maybe, you know, when I'm 50, I'm going to need that as well. Jawline exercises, face yoga exercises. I don't know what some of these are, but they have a lot of search volume. So you can just look through these and click on these and find which ones you want to write about. But if you're in fitness, it could be exercises. If you're in food, it will be recipes. So people in the food niche can write about affiliate articles on like what products to actually use in the kitchen appliances, things that are expensive, but they can also write, you know, recipes. And that's primarily the most traffic is through recipes for food blogs. So again, we see a lot that are really competitive, um, orangish color. Let's drop it down again to like 15. We'll go even lower because there's just so many different recipes out there, but we can see what's kind of the newer recipes are, you know, the newer stuff's going to be a little bit less competitive. Chicken liver recipes, russet potato recipes, banana pepper recipes, pork cutlet recipes, you know, silken tofu recipes, breakfast sandwich recipes, difficulty of zero. So you can find a ton of informational content that you can write about in any niche. You just have to understand the informational intent and understand how keyword research works in your niche. If you're a food blogger and you don't know that you should be writing recipes and about products, then you probably shouldn't be a blogger in that niche because you need to understand this stuff. And you know to understand that like search intent is kind of the hidden layer underneath keyword research. And there's really only two things, transactional posts and informational posts. Now understanding that intent makes it so much easier to just create a list of 20, 30, 50 articles that you're gonna write and then stack rank them based on volume, difficulty, how easy is it to rank for? And then the, you know, the one that you can make up is the revenue potential, which we'll cover when it comes to making money with affiliate marketing. So let's talk about joining affiliate programs. So I'm currently in over 300 ish affiliate programs, probably 50 make the bulk of revenue with like a top 10 that make 80% of all revenue for my blog over a hundred thousand dollars a month consistently. We did 1.5 million ish in 2022. We'll do another probably similar amount in 2023 because I'm in a lot of recurring software affiliate programs, but let's talk about joining affiliate programs here. So how to find good ones? Well, we have to go back to keyword research and look for clues. So let's say that we wanted to write about those pickleball paddles. Well, I would just search for pickleball affiliate programs, or I'd find the brands themselves and then Google the brand name plus affiliate program. Then you can find it that way. And all that you would do is like Google that. That's typically how you find an affiliate program is through Google. You can also look at the competition. So if somebody's ranking for pickleball paddles or a tennis rackets, whatever you're Googling, see if they have affiliate links in their article. You'll notice these by hovering over the links to the companies and then looking at the bottom left of the screen and seeing, is there a weird looking link? Is it not a normal like website.com link? Because affiliate links have unique identifiers with numbers, letters, or they can be cloaked affiliate links that look you know nice but have like a go or a recommends modifier in there so you can find affiliate links and then say okay they must have an affiliate program then and now you want to you know make a list of all the brands in your niche that you could promote so again back to spreadsheets back to here's a tab in your spreadsheet for all your keywords here's another tab for affiliate programs you want to join with the sign up links and where you do that so to join them it's actually really simple so to, there's really just a few main factors when it comes to affiliate marketing there's joining the program so you fill out a form you put in your website, you put in, you know, your name, your email, just some information. They might ask you like, do you have traffic today? What, what kind of traffic is it? Is it SEO ads? What are you doing kind of thing? But it's a very simple form it takes like two minutes usually for most of them. So you should probably have traffic and a website first. Now, do you need a website hundred percent of the time? Not necessarily. You could have a YouTube channel. You could have social media with followers, but to in, uh, increase your chances of getting approved, you should have a website and you should have some traffic. Again, this is, we don't want to just join a bunch of affiliate programs when we have no traffic yet. Our time would be better spent on building more content, building topical authority, using those AI tools, writing content yourself, doing link building, all of those things, rather than joining a bunch of affiliate programs, filling out the forums, getting excited about making money when you don't yet have the traffic yet to really do it. So affiliate marketing is a numbers game. It takes a good amount of uh, traffic to make money, not as much as ads, but you need a little bit of traffic at least to get started. So you fill out the application and then you join, you get your affiliate links. So sometimes there's affiliate networks that have a bunch of affiliate programs in there. So you should join like Impact, ShareASale, CJ, 
partner stack if you're in software, but you can join these networks and then inside of the networks, you can join the individual affiliate programs, grab your links that way, see all of your data. Sometimes uh, companies run their own affiliate programs in their own software. So that's logging into one specific thing, like Bluehost used to have their own platform and you would log into your Bluehost affiliate dashboard. You'd only see Bluehost data. You'd see your clicks, your commissions, your conversions, and you could grab your links in there. They have since migrated to Impact. So you go. You would have to, if you want to sign up for the Bluehost affiliate program now, you'd have to sign up for an Impact account and then join via there. So really what you do is you get your affiliate links, you paste them into articles, and you can use a tool like Thirsty Affiliates to do that. So you just put in you know, the name of the company, like Bluehost, you paste your affiliate link into that spot, you hit save, and then you start adding that in. So in WordPress, next to adding a link, it'll show a little Thirsty Affiliates thing. You click that, you search for Bluehost, you click it, it adds your affiliate link in. And what's nice about that is anytime that you change an affiliate link, like let's say Bluehost has a special or a promotion or they change what their affiliate link is for you, then you just change it once in Thirsty Affiliates and it changes it site-wide every time that you added it. So, so really affiliate marketing is really simple. There's your affiliate links, which is uniquely identified to you. Anytime someone clicks on that, it makes a purchase within a cookie duration window. So it doesn't have to be right away. It could be within 30 or 60 days. You get credit for that sale, you get paid. You just need basically a PayPal account and that's about it. You don't have to have an LLC. You can be a sole proprietor, but really as long as you have a PayPal account, that's what most affiliate programs run on. Now let's talk about some final notes on making money blogging in 2023 in this world of AI. So the opportunity here is bigger than it's ever been before. So there's more people using Google searching for products. Think about how many more people are coming online around the world, how many people are searching and buying. E-commerce is going up, people buying things online is going up, which means people purchasing through affiliate links is also going up. Now the negative impact of AI and people thinking, oh, everyone's gonna use ChatGPT and not Google anymore, simply isn't true. The opportunity overshadows that. So for example, yeah, some people might go to ChatGPT to search for very specific long tail Wikipedia like content or very highly specific things that you wouldn't want to blog about anyways. It wouldn't make sense. Again, we're covering in depth affiliate content based on human experience, which is always going to beat some 150 word AI snippet and then informational in depth content. that again is always going to beat that AI snippet. So there is power in the prompt. So those who win will be able to understand SEO and be able to harness prompts and the power of AI. So maybe, you know, for affiliate articles in the future, you could ask ChatGPT, you know, for these best pickleball paddles for this specific one, what are customers on Amazon saying as far as the pros, cons, what they like, what they dislike, and then use using real customer reviews to inform your actual blog post. So those things could be really beneficial. Now, you don't have to spend money on expensive tools. You really don't. You don't have to spend a bunch of money and credits on AI tools. You can write everything yourself still. You know, we don't use a ton of AI tools specifically for our websites, uh, Blog Growth Engine or adamenfro.com or anything like that. But it doesn't have to be expensive, but you should know, you know, what is going on in this blogging landscape. You have to understand this stuff in order to be successful. And the future is one click. You know, one click can now create a blog post and that's only going to get smarter. But with lots of this AI content, you know, I ran through these tools before and a lot of them are still AI content detection. They're using plagiarism. They're just not quite there yet. It all goes back to human experience. So how can you add content to blog posts that is about your experience with stuff, your own unique take, a little bit of storytelling, imagery, things that are interesting, that actually wins out. But blogging is still the best business to start if you're a beginner because we can use these types of tools. We can make a lot of progress faster. It's actually one of the only businesses you can also outsource. It's not like this where I'm on camera where I have to talk to the camera. You can just do it behind the scenes. You can outsource to an AIO writer, make a lot of progress while you sleep make a lot of mistakes because blogs are infinitely updatable, but it's still a great opportunity in the 2020s. So ultimately, here's the truth about making $10,000 a month with a blog. There's lots of different ways you can do it. You can make it from just a few articles. And here's uh, one of our Blog Growth Engine students, Christina. She started in March 2022. And now she's making over $20,000 a month. April 23, she was making 15,000. It's now over 20. But she has doing this from multiple affiliate articles. So you can do it with just a handful of articles ranking. Not everything's going to rank, but certain things can, and that can add up over time. Or you can make it by selling a few spots in articles. So you can do sponsorships with the blog. That's another revenue stream. So Paul actually joined. He's from Nigeria. He joined in November of 2022 using basically all of his money. <laughs> but he made it all back within the next month. And now he's making 95% of his money from affiliate commissions over $5,000 a month. And he was selling spots in some articles. So if you rank really well for something, you're on page one of Google for one of these best transactional terms, you can actually sell that spot to a brand. They'll probably actually reach out to you and start asking, hey, how can you feature us? Hey, how much traffic are you getting? Can we pay you to be put from number three to number one? So it starts building those types of opportunities. Or you can make it with one to two consulting clients. So it's interesting that all the things that you learn while you're blogging, creating content, 
mapping out content, doing on-page SEO, writing, link building. All of these things are actually sellable skills that you can become a consultant for. So you could have two clients and charge them $5,000 a month each. You're making $10,000 a month, $120,000 a year. That's actually how I started with my blog. I was doing consulting before I made any affiliate revenue. That's a way to leave your job quicker. So you can just package some stuff together. And in Blog Growth Engine, we have you know how to package and sell, pricing, proposals, invoicing, all of that kind of stuff. But really, there's a ton of ways to do it. You can have affiliate sales, build authority for yourself. Like we have students that are in Forbes, entrepreneur.com, writing content, affiliate, ads, services. It really just opens up all revenue streams into your life, which is why blogging is great. So a blog is really the first path to monetization. There's affiliate income, ads, courses, eventually sponsorships. The list goes on and on. Like I started my blog in 2019 with consulting. Then I moved to some ads and affiliate marketing. Affiliate marketing got to over $100,000 a month. I built my email list to 50,000. I then used my personal brand to spin that into a YouTube channel. Then a Blog Growth Engine YouTube channel that you're watching now, multiple communities, and it all stemmed from one person, one blog. And that's the power of where and how big this thing can actually grow. But you need to start building something for yourself and no one else, please do it. When I left my full-time job, they refilled my role in like two days. They didn't care. It wasn't a big deal. But you should set yourself up. You know, this is a long-term strategy. This isn't paste a bunch of affiliate links on Facebook and try to get rich overnight. This is something that you can build in the background of your life, but you should know that it's going to take, you know, three to six months to start making some decent money. And then it can keep growing and snowballing over time where you're making $10,000 every single month, not just a flash in the pan where you're making it for a couple months. So if you're interested in truly getting started with this world of AI and blogging once and for all, you can join us, join our thousands of students in our community, Blog Growth Engine. It's your personal roadmap to 10K a month, tons and tons of content. So if we look inside, we can see a membership of 2,500 members, super active community. There's people updating and posting stuff every hour. People are really supportive, helping each other out. There's all these wins in here. People getting first results, joining in March, Amazon sales, milestone wins, getting paid, student successes, all of that. And you can see that there's a classroom tab here, which has our historic Blog Growth Engine legacy program, which is over 40 hours of content that was shot in 2021, 22. Then we have this new Blog Growth Engine 4.0, which is updated for 2023. But you can see all kinds of different content. There's hours and hours and hours of laid out step-by-step -step content around building your 10K a month plan, exercises that you run through and get with our blog coaches on. Then we go to keyword research and search intent, mindset stuff, how to build your website click by click, content creation, templates, formatting, all of that, web copy masterclasses. We have multiple blog coaches in here. It's not just me. There's me plus you know five other coaches, plus Colin, plus our sales managers, plus everybody in here. Monetization monetizing your skills. So how to create an agency, updating content, scaling and outsourcing, recommended tools, all of that different stuff. And then we have the vault. So all kinds of content that didn't quite fit into the course curriculum, but this is always being updated with new course content as well. We also have a calendar, you know, we're going to have four coaches. We just hired our, um, actually our fifth coach. We just hired our fifth coach. So we're gonna have four weekly Q and A's here. Um, these are small group Q and A's that you can join, get your questions answered. You know, it's kind of like a college. This isn't just a course. This is a community and a college and it's very supportive and it can help you get there. So when you join, you get all the content, you get the private community, one-time pricing and bonus content, you know, the vault, all that extra exclusive content that's always being updated. We get a private link exchange Slack group so you can do guest posts and trade links with people and get more links faster, which is really cool. We, again, we have the Q and A's, we have templates, business spreadsheets, how to track profit and loss, blog post templates themselves, a lot of that. You also get an exclusive 90 minute AI writing tool masterclass with our head coach, Eddie B. He's super in the weeds on these AI writing tools. He can actually create an SEO optimized, perfect blog post in like an hour max with these AI tools. So you get the perfect uh, 90 minute free training there and a 14 day money back guarantee. So if you go through the course, if you watch the videos, if you book a call with a coach and you still don't like it, you can get your money back. You just have to email support at bloggrowthengine.com. And then oftentimes there's obstacles that get in the way. So there could be money, time, ability, confusion, fear. It can be confusing to start a blogging business. What keywords do you choose? What niche do you even choose? What website domain name do I use? How do I join these affiliate programs? We've got you all covered here to clear up the confusion. Like you have to get your specific questions answered over a long period of time to find success. So it's also time, you know, how long do you need? Maybe five to 10 hours a week to build your blog, but then you get that time back in spades. That's really why I started my blog was for the time freedom, the eventual time freedom. And there's a lot of things that can get in your way, but just, I want you to think about what is your why? So why are you building this side hustle, this blog, this business on the side? Think about it. For me, it was time freedom, spend more time with my family, save money for retirement. You know, maybe it could be uh, saving for your kid's college or getting out of debt. You know, I paid off, my student loans 
uh, a couple years into my blog. I paid them all off. I was traveling. I was in Australia. That's the kind of freedom that my blog allowed me to have. So you just got to think about your why. Really, I want you to become our next case study. We have dozens and dozens of case studies, students making five, 10, over that $1,000 a month. If you want to learn more, you know, you want to get a bunch of free content, please click the link in the description below. You'll get a bunch of free content, exactly more stuff about what it takes, stuff that we don't have on YouTube. So you can get started that way. And I hope you do join us. You know, it's a fun business to start. And I hope you enjoy this new YouTube channel that we're building. We're going to have a lot of new content on this channel. Please like the video, uh, check out other videos on our channel, and I will see you in the next one.